Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi. Welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. This is 7th week, module number 3 and lecture number 39. I have started the discussion on nonverbal communication in this week and in this module particularly, I am going to talk about some basics and universals in terms of nonverbal communication. Before I start, let me give a brief quick review of what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I highlighted some basic issues of nonverbal communication, particularly the issues related to use of verbal and nonverbal uh, in general. And then more when we come and uh, when we come to talk about nonverbal, I focused on voluntary body language and involuntary body language. Voluntary body language or the formalized gestures like the namaste handshake that we do and which we are very conscious about it and that is why it is unproblematic. But the involuntary body language, so that is actually a subconscious reflection of our uh, innermost thoughts which means it is problematic because we actually do not know what we are telling others through our body language. Are we afraid? Are we overconfident? Are we nervous? So, these things even if we want to control it, we are using our own body to express and give clues to others. The other interesting factor that I talked about uh, in the previous lecture in terms of issues is that with regard to appearance. So, I highlighted this in order to tell you as why you should really bother about your appearance because in terms of nonverbal communication, people who are attractive are just to be more intelligent. They are supposed to be more capable. People think that they are uh, generally more intelligent and capable. So, they should be hired, they should be promoted faster. So, they should be given more money in terms of increment. Now, the interesting thing is there is no factual basis to corroborate this, but it is the impact of nonverbal communication, okay, about 93 percent impression that is created even before you speak. So, that is actually giving this appearance uh, the impact that whether it deserves or not. So, it is trying to do that. So, I just told you that you should be cautious about your appearance. So, it is not about looking good in terms of uh, the uh, physiological aspects, but looking good in terms of uh, uh, grooming yourself, taking care of your body language and all that. Later, I talked about the types of nonverbal communication and particularly about seven types I focused. The kinesics is actually referring to body movement and gesture in general. Facial expression is something that we talked about and then we looked at the six basic facial expressions. Oculistics is about eye gaze and then here I talked about the dilation as well as contraction and how people can manipulate your interests to selling you something at a very high price just by looking at your uh, behavior in terms of your eye gaze. Haptics is to do with touch and then we know that it is the one that uh, the infant is born with and then it is something that uh, continues till one grows up and then touch or lack of touch can tell us the amount of intimacy, the amount of comfort a person is uh, receiving in interpersonal relations. Then I talked about proximix that is to do with the use of interpersonal space and then how we need to use it, what uh, is suggested when a person is coming close to somebody, 
what do we do when we like or when we do not like someone? Why do we sit close with someone and why do we maintain distance with someone? So, these are the things we looked at and then uh, I spent quite some time on chronemics that is with regard to the monochronic as well as polychronic time perspectives people have and then I said that there are cultural differences, but in terms of corporate culture most of the times they go for monochronic uh, time perception. So, time is important, time is budgeted, time is ration, time is money. So, your entire personality is measured in terms of the way you use time. So, you have to use it very frugally, carefully in a very planned consistent manner. I concluded uh, the lecture with reference to paralinguistics as also a type of nonverbal communication. It indicates vocal cues and silence, but I also try to communicate with you that silence is perhaps the highest form of eloquence and then you need to use that very effectively and uh, it is a kind of misconception that speaking more. Uh, can get you the desired results, but often you can use silence to get what you want in life also. So, with that I concluded the lecture. In this one, when I am going to talk about body language, basics and universals, I just want to tell you first that some gestures have culturally different meaning. Okay. This I mentioned it in the previous one also. But irrespective of that, even if there are cultural differences, there are some universally acceptable expressions. In fact, there are many already listed and we are going to look at some common sets of universal expressions which are going to help us. The other uh, interesting thing that you should notice, most of them have originated from the western concepts. Okay, the, uh, book on uh, origin of species and then Darwin's theory linking man's behavior with those of uh, chimpanzees and then so many studies which followed. So, they have all actually started from the western one. So, the body language uh, expressions which we generally consider as universals are all coming from the uh, western books. So, while applying them especially in an Indian context, we need to use our discretion, we need to be very careful, we need to look at the context and we need to accept the deviations. Look at the simple example which I briefly mentioned in the previous lecture that is of touching the feet of elders. Now, in western context, if you go and touch not only elders, anybody's feet, it is considered slavish and if it is a boss junior or subordinate relationship, it is considered as that you are trying to flatter, it is considered that you are not honest and in worst case that you are uncultured. Now, in an Indian context as you know it is exactly the opposite. When somebody touches the feet particularly of the elder person, the elder person looks at the one who touches her feet as somebody who is respectful, sincere, well behaved and cultured. Okay. In fact, they feel that the family has actually trained uh, this person in a very uh, nice and culturally acceptable manner. Now, look at these uh, deviations, but at the same time today we are in a global scenario. So, we are living in this uh, globalized culture where uniqueness of cultures are actually getting fragmented and disintegrated. So, the corporate culture, the multinational culture is actually removing what is individualistic and introducing what is common to all. So, in this context again you need to know in a professional sense also, what are the universals, what are the basics which you can follow and which you can try to create a good impression when you use them as uh, expressions for your emotions. Look at uh, some basics, particularly in terms of defensive gesture. 
now crossing arms so crossing arms but slightly slouched okay so slightly it is low and the legs also is not straight okay and then it is also sometimes uh, pulled together now this slightly slouched one it is indicating insecurity lack of interest in mingling with others lack of trust in the other person and there is a kind of internal discomfort when the person is trying to hold it in a slightly slouched manner. However, if you are seated with someone and then you are holding it, so it can mean that you are empathizing, you are sympathizing with the other person to whom you are talking to. You are suggesting that, okay, I am not going to interfere, just keep going. So, I am, I am just controlling all my body language, I am just sitting, I am all body to you, all attentive to you. Okay, so, it can indicate empathy. Now, can it become even an offensive gesture? Look at the picture I have put below. So, crossing arms very upright and tight okay. and then legs in a firm open uh, position. So, it can indicate self confidence, okay. it can indicate contentment, especially when you uh, look at uh, our own famous uh, picture of uh, Swami Vivekananda, all the time you look at him, so he is shown that he is uh, crossing his arms, but then he is not indicating as it could be seen in a western context that he is showing an offensive gesture, he is also not showing a defensive one, but then this kind of one, especially when the feet or open. Okay. So, and then the uh, arms are uh, actually crossed. So, that can indicate self confidence. It can also indicate contentment. I am satisfied with myself. It can indicate modesty. It can indicate humility. But in the extreme case, as I have put the other figure <coughs> down, it can indicate arrogance. It can show that I am more powerful than you. Let me see what you can do to me. Okay, so, it can indicate that kind of attitude also. So, you have to be very careful. Normally, any kind of crossing gestures are considered to be defensive ones. Okay. So, people use uh, that kind of uh, crossing uh, gestures even in terms of using handbag and all that. Look at feet. Now, our feet can indicate attraction as well as dislike. So, if you are standing or sitting and are attracted to someone, whether or not you are talking to them, your feet will be pointing in that direction. Okay, this uh, spontaneous response they say, generally like your feet is uh, open and then it is pointing towards that person. So, you are welcoming a conversation with the person and then you are in interested in the person. But it can also mean dislike the way the feet is used. If they are withdrawn, okay, it can mean that uh, you are not uh, really inclined towards talking to the person or look at another situation. If you are approaching two people talking to each other, they are your uh, classmates. Now, if the feet of the people stay in place and they twist only their torsos, okay, they just look at you and then they talk to you. But then they are not completely turning towards you and then leaving the feet open. So, it indicates that they do not want you to join the conversation. In fact, they dislike your joining. But on the other hand, if they want you to join, like I said before, so they will keep the feet open, indicating that you are welcome to join. So, this feet, although we think that face is the index to mind and it gives everything about a person feet also can give very important clues about what the person is thinking and what the person wants to do very spontaneously. Look at some more uh, <coughs> basics and universals in terms of attraction. Men occasionally play with one of their ear lobes while talking. So, indicating they are attracted to the person to whom they are talking. In case of women, it is believed that they will play with the lock of hair. Okay, or they just try to put the hair in the front 
or they continually tuck their hair behind their ears. So, these gestures they say that especially leaving it loose and putting it in front they generally say that is showing that they are interested in uh, at least talking to the person in front. They, they like talking to the person if not it is uh, leading to a very serious kind of attraction, but at least they are not afraid okay, they are not inhibited in talking to this person. Now, conversely men digging ear wax okay, especially they may take the uh, pen cover and then use it and then dig ear wax or picking nose especially while communicating with women they are supposed to be filthy or perverted. So, because there are some perverted thoughts or going that is indicated by the nose picking or uh, uh, trying to dig ear wax especially when they are communicating with someone. So, they are doing it unintentionally and they are not able to control it, but the person who is sitting at the opposite can just uh, understand that the thoughts are not very clear. More in terms of basics and universals, any gesture as I was trying to uh, communicate before that is not crossed as opposed to crossing if it is open. So, any kind of openness, open hands, open palms, even coat which is not covered fully, but unburdened. Okay. So, all these are indicating that I am open, I am honest, I am truthful, I am free to talk to you. The opposite is defensiveness, arms crossed and then while talking they look at the sideways, they are not maintaining eye contact, touching or even rubbing nose rubbing eyes, button coat, drawing away. So, when you talk the other person keeps moving away. So, it is indicating that the other person is somewhat in the defensive mode. Insecurity is indicated in uh, so many simple ways, but which most of the times we do it inadvertently. Pinching flesh, so you yourself try to pinch and then chewing pen or chewing anything some people chew the collar. Okay. So, whatever is in their hand they keep chewing. Even chewing gum while talking to somebody people say that it is a kind of psychological insecurity. Thumb over thumb, so like putting the thumb over thumb, biting fingernail. So, these are all symptoms of insecurity, but the opposite cooperation. How do you understand that somebody is willing to cooperate with you? The upper body in sprinter's position. So, sprinter is like the person who is about to sprint. So, slightly inclined towards the other person. So, this slight leaning shows that the other person is interested as opposed to withdrawal. So, the more you lean back you are indifferent, you are laid back, you are not interested in conversation. Sitting erect, you are somewhat in a neutral one, but slight leaning towards the person in the front is indicating that you are actually interested in the conversation, interested in talking to the person. Sitting on edge of chair, remember when will you do this? Especially when you watch a thriller, when you watch a suspense movie, when you watch any event that you are so engrossed. So, initially when the movie begins you are at the back of the seat relaxed, slowly as the movie unfolds and it is very uh, thrilling for you. So, you move towards and at the end climax you are literally on the edge of the seat and you want to see what is happening, okay, who has done it. Okay. So, sitting on edge of chair, so will show that you are cooperating you are deeply interested in what is happening before you. Hand to face gestures and unbuttoning coat. So, all will indicate that you are actually trying to cooperate. Now, confidence, this is not something that uh, uh, comes to the person by pretension, but usually when the person is confident like the steepled hands. 
So, and then hands behind back. So, while sitting for example, the person is kept like this, back stiffened. So, standing straight, hands in coat pockets with thumb out, hands on lapels of coat. Now, hands in coat pocket with thumbs out is showing confidence, but hands in coat pockets with the thumb in can show that the person is defensive. Hands on lapels of coat is indicating confidence, but hands trying to hide okay, somewhere inside the coat, so will indicate insecurity. How is nervousness indicated? Clearing throat <coughs> frequently, especially in a talk. Again, uh, this can indicate nervousness, but then there are exceptions like if the room is too cold or the person is actually suffering from severe cold, the person can do that. So, you have to use discretion, I will talk about this in the next lecture, but right now the basics when somebody is trying to clear throat, normally the person is nervous, especially in a situation where the person is asked to deliver a speech. Whistling in the dark in particular, when the person is moving is afraid of the dark. So, whistling is a way to uh, communicate that the person is not that afraid and trying to muster up some courage, but actually inside the person is nervous. Smoking especially before the interview, especially before meeting your boss, especially before you have to go and talk something very important. So, that indicates nervousness. Pinching flesh, fidgeting, fidgeting is doing with your finger or with your leg. So, you do something even you do not know why you are doing it, why your fingers are behaving like that. Covering mouth while talking. So, uh, that again can mean you are trying to hide something lie, but at the same time you are nervous because you do not want somebody to find out that you are actually lying. Jiggling money or keys from the pocket, so you have kept some keys, but then you try to jiggle. Tugging ears, like trying to pull it or trying to fold it, put it inside and then wringing hands, okay, so all these things can indicate nervousness. Frustration, when the person is frustration, usually he takes short breaths or sounds like tightly clenched hands, wringing hands. So, wringing hands is indicating nervousness, but extreme form of wringing hands can indicate frustration. Fist like gestures, rubbing hand through hair, rubbing back of neck. So, all these ones can indicate that the person is frustrated. Let us look at some very quick behavior and interpretation. Tilted head, slightly tilted head, it is indicating the person is interested in your talk. Stroking chin, trying to make a decision, looking down face turned away. So, looking down face turned away, so not believing in you. Biting nails insecurity, nervousness, rubbing hands, anticipation. So, you might have seen when you uh, tell small kids, either as a parent or as a teacher, you say that, oh this weekend let us go for a picnic. So, immediately the children do like this, oh wow, I am ready, okay, where are we going? So, rubbing hands indicating anticipation, pulling or tugging at tear it can mean indecision. So, I am not able to decide on what you are telling. Hand to cheek. So, hand to cheek, evaluation, thinking, touching, slightly rubbing the nose, it can mean rejection, doubt, even lying, rubbing the eye, again doubt, disbelief, hands clasped behind back. I even showed a picture in the quiz. It is uh, anger, frustration, apprehension, but uh, this is not on the back of the head, but hands clasped behind back. Okay. So, and then you are just hiding that it is clasped, it can show that you are angry, frustrated or apprehensive. 
locked ankles again apprehension, inspecting fingernails or looking at a watch. So, while talking to somebody the person is closely inspecting the fingernails or looking at the watch frequently. So, it indicates that I am bored okay. or it can show vanity. So, what kind of nonsense you are talking? Okay. So, it is really boring. In fact, it is suggested that if you know that somebody is really boring you, looking at the fingernails will indicate to the person that the person is boring you or looking at the watch either on your hand or on the clock that is uh, fitted on the wall. Looking at it frequently can indicate that uh, you are boring, you are wasting my time. Head resting in and eyes downcast again can mean boredom. I showed again a picture, so in the quiz, so it can indicate that it is boredom. Brisk erect walk confidence. So, as opposite to that, so if the walk is slouching and then head is slow, it and then dejection. So, that uh, I have put it at the end walking with hands in pockets, shoulders hunched is dejection. Standing with hands on hips. So, it can mean readiness, I am ready, but it can also mean aggression. Sitting with legs crossed, foot kicking slightly can indicate boredom. Sitting with legs apart, open, relaxed, arms crossed on chest, defensiveness. Sometimes uh, people even use folder okay, and then they put it there. So, indicating they are, uh, uh, they are not comfortable with the person sitting before them. Walking with hands in pocket, shoulders hunched indicates dejection. Sitting with hands clasped behind head, legs crossed. So, there was a picture in the quiz, the boss sitting like this and then it shows confidence, superiority. Open palm, sincerity, openness, even innocence. So, children like you tell them, show me what you have in hand, they will just show like this. So, indicating that no, I do not have anything, innocence. Pinching bridge of nose, especially eyes closed, so that is evaluation. Tapping or drumming fingers, that is impatience. Steepling fingers, authoritative, patting, fondling, rubbing hair, lack of self-confidence, insecurity. So, you might see uh, especially the subordinates when they want to talk to boss, uh, especially in terms of increment or asking for some money. So, they will they'll try to uh, scratch their hair while asking, sir, uh, I want to ask you this thing. So, that shows lack of confidence and insecurity. Now, whatever I discuss are the basics universals, but uh, keep them with a pinch of salt that when you use it in an Indi Indian context, you need to use it appropriately. We will look at how we can interpret and what are the real issues when we are trying to do that in the next lecture. But before I conclude, some more thoughts on body language and just I want you to be motivated to use this body language appropriately. Understand that body language is innate in us, that is it is in us, it is in our body, it is in our system, it is in our brain, it is in our behavior. So, you need not go and bring something from outside. Studies have shown that even a blind person compared to a normal human being, both of them try to express body language in a similar manner. Example, uh, when they are victorious, okay, so both of them raise their hands. So, when they are sorrowful, the face was indicating the same kind of agony on both faces, whether the person is blind or whether the person is able to see uh, normally. So, even a blind person expresses in body language effectively. So, this is something that you should keep in mind. 
So, most of the emotional expressions which you like in others, which you should imbibe in you, actually they all lie latent. So, they are hidden, they are concealed. Okay. You do not have to borrow it from someone. What you have to do is, you have to pay attention, you have to control the bad ones, but you have to work and take efforts to make the good ones manifested. You have to patent them, what is latent in you. You have to bring them out, it has to come out. Now, the suggestions that I have given, you need to introspect what kind of gestures I am using. Ideally speaking, you need to stand before a mirror when you are practicing something, look at your gestures. But more than that, we are interested in the involuntary gestures that you are making. Ask somebody to make videos when you are in a group, when you are alone, without your knowledge, okay, without your knowledge. And then if the friend is uh, close to you, you sit with the friend and then try to analyze your own behavior. Ask the friend, ask yourself, which of your behaviors were acceptable and which expressions you could change. And you try to interpret when were you behaving in a defensive manner, when were you behaving in an offensive manner, what were the body language cues that were given to the others indicating that you are aggressive, you are afraid and indicating that you are confident, you are happy. So, what were the clues that were going from your body? So, overall try to use body language to better your life and achieve what you want. As a concluding thought, I just want you to leave you with one quotation from Martha Graham which says, the body never lies. As a good habit to be developed, if I tell you, you should speak the truth all the time, you are going to laugh at me and tell that, oh this world is full of lies and then how can I speak truth all the time and then this world is not for uh, people like Mahatma Gandhi or Harish Chandra. So, we have to tell lies and uh, without telling lies we cannot uh, survive. Now, if you have that kind of thinking, this quote tells you, do whatever you want, you keep telling lies. In your words, that is 7 percent of what you are telling other people, but 93 percent of your body which other people are actually watching in terms of impact and 100 percent of your body expressions, they never tell a lie. What you are thinking, how you are feeling, what you think about the person in front of you, okay. all these things are seen by the other person in a very transparent manner. Your body is telling the entire story. Your body is actually the autobiography that others can read it very easily. So, when you realize that your body never tells lies, should not you be careful? And do not you think that there is no point in thinking that you will tell lies all the time and try to convince people. People are not going to trust you, they are just going to see what the body tells you. And even they do not tell you that they are looking at the body, it is what their mind is trying to get and they get an intuitive feeling, but all our intuitive feelings are actually guided by the emotional expressions, the body language cues. So, the body never lies, speak truth in terms of verbal as well as non-verbal communication. So, with this thought, let me conclude this video. Thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. I will come back with more uh, suggestions for improving your body language in the next lecture. Thanks again.